Before this video begins, I'd like to give a huge thanks to my channel members, who you can see on screen now. Become a member by hitting the join button and get your name here among other awards today. Hello there and welcome back to another edition of Forza Top Gear Laps. Today we are taking a look at some more modern hot hatches. Let's kick things off with the 2012 Vauxhall Astra VXR 276 horsepower, 293 foot band torque, 3,252 pounds of weight. Now, this being a front wheel drive car with figures like that, it means one of two things. One, it's going to be very, very quick. Or two, it's going to be very, very quick on a straight and then immediately all fall apart when it gets to the corners. And this being a Vauxhall, uh, the latter does seem more likely. The previous generation of Astra VXR is known for its understeer capabilities. In fact, all of the VXR range from around that time, especially the Vectra, are all known for understeering wildly. However, uh, I'm pleased to report when it comes to the 2012 Astra, they seem to have got it relatively in check. I assume they've played around a bit more uh, with differential settings, getting that more right, as well as using some electronics to back off the power where need be. And uh, yeah, overall, this is a much better car to drive than its 2006 equivalent. It is a very, well, it is a pretty nice car to drive. It does have a couple of issues. It feels very, very heavy. Uh, which I wasn't really expecting. You'd expect a Vauxhall to feel relatively chuckable and light, but no. For whatever reason, this one does have a bit of a heavy feel to it, uh, which I wasn't quite ready for. I mean, 3,252 pounds is not lightweight, but it's not a whole lot of weight, so that was interesting. But overall, I much prefer this Astra uh, to the previous generations of Astra VXR, probably the best handling. Uh, VXR model you'll be able to find. Next up we have the 2013 Bath Ponto Super Sport 177 horsepower, 199 foot pound torque, 2612 pounds of weight. This is the least powerful car today and also the lightest car we have here today. And the Abarth Ponto is not an Abarth product often spoke about. Usually everyone goes to the 500, you know, from the new 500s and 595, 695s or whatever they're calling them at the moment. And even before that, you know, your Abarth 1000 TCs, the crazy mental cars that had the, uh, the hood up on the rear end because they couldn't fit the engine in it and that was the solution they had which is a fantastically Italian solution. Um, yeah, the Abarth Ponto though not really spoke about. Uh, that being said though, the Abarth Ponto is actually a surprisingly capable little hot hatch if you're in the market for a hot hatchback. As far as this one goes uh, to drive, it handles absolutely spot on. Uh, I haven't driven the Abarth Ponto all that much in this game or all that much in Forza in general. But the above punter really impressed me with just how spot on the handling is. I might even argue this handles a little bit better than some models of 500. Not the 695 by Posto, which is the 500 we have available in the game, because that is a very excellent car to drive, or at least it used to be. But this one, yeah, it handles really, really well. If you need, if you're sort of in the market for one of these small hatchbacks, you need something different to drive along in. Um, I definitely cold-heartedly uh, recommend the Abarth Ponto. It might be one of the best handling cars in its class. Next up, speaking of that class, we have the 2013 Renault Clio RS200 EDC. 197 horsepower, 177 foot-pound torque, 2,685 pounds of weight. This is the least torquey car here today. You might notice a little bit of an interesting thing there. The Abarth has 20 less horsepower, the Renault has a 20 less torque. It weighs slightly more than the Bath, but it is more practical because it does indeed have five doors over the three that the Bath has. However, uh, this is much uglier than the Bath. I am not a huge fan of this Generation 4 Clio, and I know the Generation 5 looks almost identical. Um, it's just something about it really doesn't fit me. It's sort of got this weird, full-on bulbous front, and then this sort of very squared off uh, sleek and rear end. It's very strange. It's not a car that I think melds together or looks good from any angle, really. And there's a few other annoyances I have with it, and I'm also just not a fan of Renault. Uh, but as far as it goes to drive, well, it's pretty good. I mean, at the end of the day, these cars are race-focused, I guess. You know, they have the Clio Cup, of course, and I assume that inspires uh, the RS range of vehicles. It is very heavy front-ended, which not really what I expected from this. You know, the bar feels very light, almost 50-50 style. This, you can definitely tell, all of the weight is over the rear, which makes sense. It is a front-wheel drive hatchback, but even still, uh, it is more noticeable than usual. Not a car I particularly enjoyed driving, but it wasn't terrible, nonetheless. Next up, we have the 2013 Mercedes-Benz A45 AMG 
355 horsepower, 332 foot pounds torque, 3,263 pounds of weight. One of two all wheel drive cars we have here today. This is the most powerful car here today, the torquiest car here today, and the heaviest car here today. Although, interestingly enough, uh, it's actually not that much heavier than the Vauxhall. It's 11 pounds heavier, despite the fact this has all wheel drive and 350 plus horsepower. That's very strange, I didn't actually notice that until we started recording. Uh, yeah, the A45 AMG, essentially if you ask people what the ultimate, ultimate hot hatch is, uh, many would point towards this, or the newer version of this car I should say, and of course uh, the Audi RS3 would also come up in that conversation. Me personally, I'm not a huge fan of these all-wheel drive hatchbacks, I, or hot hatchbacks, I think a hot hatchback should be front-wheel drive, uh, but nevertheless, as far as this one goes to drive, it's good. It doesn't drive like a hot hatch though. This really does more drive like a compact performance car. Think along the lines of an Audi TT and you're basically there. Uh, it does handle more like that. Gearbox is a little bit weird. Um, I find it very, very short ratioed when it's a seven speed dual clutch. So you do find yourself changing gear a lot, uh, which depending on how you look at it, you might delay some more time there or it might be easy to stay in the power band. Next up, we have what many people would consider to be the quintessential uh, little hot hatchback, the 2014 Ford Fiesta ST, 197 horsepower, 202 foot-pound torque, 2,720 pounds of weight. The Fiesta gained a huge following. People love the Fiesta ST, and of course, it's now moved on to the next generation of Fiesta ST with different engine, a 1.5 litre free cylinder compared to this car, which just has a normal 1.6 litre four cylinder turbo engine. I do like the Fiesta ST quite a lot, I think it's a really excellent looking vehicle. Uh, the Fiesta has pretty much since 2008 looked fantastic in almost every guise, and uh, yeah, this one is certainly no exception, especially with the body kit, the bigger wheels and stuff. This The Fiesta ST uh, really does look awesome. As far as it goes to drive, it is good enough, I'd say. Now, interestingly in Forza, the Fiesta ST has never really translated all that well. Uh, I actually prefer the cars like the above Punto. I think they drive a little bit better. I will say, uh, again, it's a good car, don't get me wrong, it drives fine. However, I think the above Punto is a little bit more sharp, I think it's a little bit better overall. Um, as far as this car goes as well, it does feel a bit slow, um, which is weird considering, you know, the Abarth and the Renault, uh, or sorry, the Abarth is less powerful. But yeah, it just doesn't feel quite as quick as the Abarth in a straight line, or something's going on weird there, I'm not too sure. Next up, we have another all-wheel drive car, the 2015 Audi S1, 228 horsepower, 273 foot-pound torque, 2899 pounds of weight. Yeah, that is a surprisingly high torque figure for this car. The Audi S1, of course, is, well, Audi's tiny little hot hatch based on the Volkswagen Polo platform, although, interestingly enough, um, Audi decided to go all-wheel drive, um, sort of a big-ish power car when it comes to the Audi S1, while with the uh, Polo, they just did the GCI, which is front-wheel drive, no Polo R is available, which I think is actually quite a good idea, in all fairness. Uh, the S1 critically has not been received all that well. People, Some people seem to really like this car, other people uh, not so keen on it. I personally am not so keen on it. I'm not a huge fan of the way uh, the Audi A1 looks in general, but the S1 is a little bit better, and I can appreciate the engineering that went into this vehicle. As far as it goes to drive, well, it's a lot quicker than you'd expect a typical uh, sort of super mini, hot super mini to be. It is much quicker than the Fiesta, the Punto. Um, however, it does understeer quite a lot more. Again, all-wheel drive. Uh, you might not expect it to understeer quite as much as it actually does, though. Um, it is a very understeer heavy car, which I wasn't massively expecting. Decent overall. But uh, yeah, a bit more under the heavy than you might expect. Next up, we have the 2018 Honda Civic Type R, 306 horsepower, 295 foot-pound torque, 3,117 pounds of weight. This is the big question here. Of course, we've had the previous generation of Civic Type R go around the Forza Top Gear track, and it did very well indeed. And this is the new model. This is the car which used to hold the Nurburgring track record for a front-wheel drive car and it's widely regarded to be one of the best hot hatches on sale today. The question is, 
How does it drive in Forza? Well, this car has my backing. I love the Honda Civic Type R. Uh, this one, I don't think it looks quite as good as the previous generation, but it is still a pretty cool looking car. I love how bonkers they made the Civic Type R look these days. They're not scared of marketing this thing as a Yobbo machine. It's one of the true uh, last hot hatches that really embraces hot hatch culture. As far as it goes to drive, simply put, best hot hatch you can buy, best front wheel drive car in the game, bar none. If you don't like front wheel drive cars, go ahead, try the Civic. Give it a go, see what you think, because honestly, this redefines the front wheel drive car. It handles so nicely, it is just absolutely immaculate, I can't complain about it. Lovely six speed manual transmission. I have absolutely nothing to complain about when it comes to the Civic Type R. Hilariously awesome car, and you can see just how quick it is on the replay as well. And finally today, we have the 2019 Hyundai Veloster N. 275 horsepower, 260 foot-pound torque, 3,106 pounds of weight. N is, of course, Hyundai's new performance brand. They've got N-line cars now, which I think is ridiculous, but Hyundai knows what they're doing. Uh, the N is essentially designed to give Hyundai's a little bit more sportiness, be their hot hatch brand. We've, of course, got the i30N, and if you live in America, you get this, uh, the Veloster N, which I think is actually a much more interesting car. Front-wheel drive, unlike the i30Ns, all-wheel drive. i30N, in my opinion, is a really boring hot hatch. Uh, this one, not so much. I think the Veloster's got a little bit of character to it, and of course, it's still got that weird door thing and all the rest of it. Not to everyone's cup of tea, uh, but I praise Hyundai for being a little bit weird and a little bit outside the box. As far as it goes to drive, it drives great. It is a little bit random. Sometimes you'll go through a corner once and the car will be absolutely fine. Then you go through the corner again and you'll get a little bit of understeer, maybe a little bit of lift off oversteer, uh, depending on how you take it on. But uh, yeah, the Veloster, either way, great little car to drive. I'm impressed with Hyundai's ability to make a good handling car. We've had the Hyundai Veloster Turbo go around, honestly, for the life of me, I can't remember how that drove. Uh, but yeah, this end model is really very, very good. So, uh, I applaud you, Hyundai, for making a good handling car. On to the leaderboards then, and, uh, well, the fastest car today is the Honda Civic Type R going into 154th place with a 122.245. I just want you to have a look at that time. It almost beats an XFRS, a BMW M4, BMW M5. It's quicker than an Audi RS6 with a V10 engine and 570 horsepower. The Civic Type R is an incredible car. Again, if you haven't driven it, just go ahead and drive it. It is insane. Next up, we have the Mercedes-Benz A45 AMG in 177th place with a 123.265. Goes in between a Nissan 370Z and a BMW Z3 M Coupe. It's quicker than a Maserati Ghibli uh, Jeep Wrangler Trailcat R34 Skyline. Good performance from the A45, still not really a hot hatch though. Two, uh, going into 214th place, we have the Hyundai Veloster N with a 125.537. Beats out a Golf R. Uh, which is very, very impressive, considering that's supposed to be sort of the big bollock hot hatch that everyone talks about. Yeah, uh, good on you, Hyundai. Uh, you make a better car than the Golf R, I'd probably agree with that. Um, in 246th place, we find the Vauxhall Astra VXR with 126.943. Goes in between a Lotus Lease and a BMW 850 CSI. Uh, quicker than the Solstice, quicker than the Mini JCW GP, which is actually quite impressive, because that is a very good car. Uh, good showing from Vauxhall. In 265th place, we find the Audi S1 with a 128.023, goes in between an RX-8 and an Aston Martin V8 Vantage, a little bit quicker than a Golf R32, which I think is actually quite apt. Uh, yeah, decent performance from the S1, and big props for beating the R32 as well. And finally, we have the bulk of our hot super minis for today. In 333rd place, we find the Renault Clio RS200 EDC with 129.822, just missing out on an 07 Civic Type R. In 307th place, we find the above Ponto Supersport with 129.965, which is pretty darn impressive. And in 310th place, the slowest car today, uh, the Ford Fiesta ST with 130.098. Does beat out Nissan Silvia and a Porsche 911 Carrera RS 2.7, though. Uh, yeah, the Fiesta, certainly not as bad as that time would indicate. You've got to remember this leaderboard is full of high-performance cars. So, uh, there. There you go. Out of everything here today, I applaud you to drive the 2018 Civic Type R. That is a phenomenal, phenomenal car. Uh, but outside of that, the above Ponto is sort of the biggest surprise of today. And one car that I do recommend you give a try, because it is a really fun little uh, car to throw around. Anyways, thank you all very much for watching this edition of Forza Top Gear Laps. I do hope you've enjoyed. 
next time we're going to be taking another look at some classic muscle cars so away from the lovely comfort of my hot hatches to uh, the unsophistication of a classic American muscle car and Australian as well so uh, yeah join us for that thank you all very much for watching until then farewell yeah.